Survivor has been on TV for well over 23 years now, and with so many seasons and episodes, there have been times that the show leaves us with our eyes wide, mouths open, wondering what the heck is going on. These moments can be exhilarating, and some can be so, so hard to watch. That's what today's video is all about. Five times Survivor made our jaws drop, volume six. Number one. Let's start in season 43 for a moment that no one saw coming, hence the point of this video. Our main characters here are Cody, a man with a tattoo of the word livin on his butt cheek that jumps off rocks just for fun, and Jesse, a level-headed family man who has a rocky past. These two have quickly become buddy-buddy, and in the pre-merge, Cody finds a beware advantage right before they have to go to tribal council. It says, if you can get everyone in your tribe to give you a specific bead off their bag to make make an immunity idol or you can't vote aka he's got to do this quick they got to go to tribal cody tells jesse and he's like we got this and surprisingly in large part due to cody's fun party like personality people hand him the beads no question which he makes into this stellar hat cody gotta ask did you weave these palm fronds this hat yeah I learned it from the uncles that sell them to tourists on uh, the island of oahu and with the help of my tribe we uh you know, made it real nice and fancy and put some beads on it. It's pretty impressive. Cody got an idol for basically free. The rest of the season has these two working hand in hand to eliminate everyone with no worries. That is until a second knowledge is power enters the game. Now you might know this advantage from a couple of past videos in this series, but let me catch you up if you don't. A knowledge of power is an advantage that lets you steal someone's idol at tribal council if they are in possession of one. If you ask for the idol and they say, I don't have it because they don't actually have it, they can't lie, then your knowledge of power is worthless and it's destroyed. The first KIP, as I will call it from now on, was eliminated with Geo in the pre-merge. He never used it. And since it was never played, it was rehidden at camp in the post-merge game, and now James has it. Fun. So Cody wisely lets Jesse have the idol for now, and eventually James is eliminated with the KIP in his pocket. So now people are worried about being rehidden again since it was never used. So Cody just lets Jesse hang on to his idol until the final six when Jesse's like, hmm, I have Cody's idol. I could vote him off. After all, he's gonna beat me at Final Tribal Council if I don't. But then Cody says, oh hey, can I have my idol back? Carla wants to see it and I want her to feel good before we vote her off. We sitting in that final three together. Yes sir, this is gonna be amazing bro. Grab it for me, okay. and I'm gonna show it that guy just to give her that piece of mind. Oh. <laughs> this is worst case scenario. It's so unbelievable that I can almost believe it. We had a chance to show her? No. Oh, these are very different, actually. We real good. Tonight's blindside will be the biggest of the season for sure, no doubt about it. So now we're at Tribal Council and everyone is on edge. They think Carla might have the mysterious third KIP. Cody has his idol and Jesse's plan to win is kind of going to crap. So everyone goes to vote and... So I'm playing this for Owen. For Owen? Yep. This is a hidden immunity idol. Any votes cast for Owen will not count. I'm gonna play this for myself. Okay. This is also a hidden immunity idol. Any votes wow. cast for Carla will not count. First vote, Owen does not count. Carla does not count. Cody, one vote Cody. Cody, two votes Cody. 13th person voted out of Survivor 43. Cody, three that's enough, need to bring your torch. Cody, tribe spoken. Time to go. Wow. Just like that, just like with the Janine idol before it that I highlighted in part five of this series, Jesse fooled us again. Absolutely brilliant. By the way, thank you for watching this channel and supporting it by liking and subscribing. If you want to help pick what videos I make and watch them all weeks and even months early, then consider financially supporting the channel on Patreon. It only costs a few bucks a month and you can cancel at any time. Links in the description. Thank you for your support. Number two. Let's stay in season 43 and actually pick up right where we left off. Going into the final episode, Jesse is obviously the clear fan favorite to win. How could he not be? He has made some massive moves, and if he is gone, it is likely Carla will win based on how much the storytelling has favored her and made us understand her inner thoughts, and we see her strategic mastermind despite her injury. The other three goobers, aka non-contenders at this point, are Owen, who has basically been like Charlie Brown with his bad luck, Cassidy, who has played a smart under the 
the radar game and Gabler who kind of made a mess in the first half of the game by making so many dumb moves but has been befriending everyone since he eliminated his rival with Ellie but like Cassidy this has been all under the radar and seemingly inconsequential but then the stars line up as Jesse plays his Janine idol which by the way just shocks her at tribal council so he is safe and Carla is voted off in fifth place once again Jesse has secured himself as the front runner it's not even close everyone knows it he is going to win this game but then Cassidy wins the final four immunity challenge so now she has the power to choose which people are going to the fire making competition which two people that is she holds the power she chooses Jesse because she wants him gone and Gabler since it seems like he stands a better chance of being Jesse than Owen does and Cassidy doesn't want to risk her life trying to beat Jesse so begin this is it. Both players prepping. Gabler's the first to get flame. Both guys have flame. Jesse nurturing a little flame. Gabler adding more sticks. He's got a decent fire going. Jesse now has got a little something going. He's in it. Gabler's is high and strong. Fireman! There it is. Woo! Gabler makes fire. Played a hell of a game. Be proud of yourself. I'm proud of you. Proud of you, dude. Jesse, Travis Smoke. Yep, the biggest threats have all been eliminated in the last three tribal councils between Cody, Carla, and now Jesse. It looks like Owen might be guaranteed third place. Gabler could get a vote or two, after all, he was friends with Ryan. And Cassidy's probably gonna win in boring fashion. But then the jury starts asking questions at Final Tribal. And Owen is actually owning his terrible Charlie Brown game and gaining some respect. Gabler is making them laugh. And Cassidy is not reading the room. Regardless, a bad Final Tribal has never stopped anyone from winning this game before. And Cassidy's wasn't bad. It was just underwhelming, especially in comparison to Owen and Gabler. So Jeff goes to reveal who won and... First vote, Cassidy. Gabler, one vote Cassidy, one vote Gabler. Gabler, two votes Gabler. Gabler, that's three votes Gabler. Gabler, four votes Gabler. The winner, Survivor 43, Gabler. That's five, that's enough. Thank you. We have our winner. Thank you. What the heck? How did Gabler come one vote shy of a perfect game? Something we have only ever seen twice in the history of this show. Well, as it turns out, the show had been hinting at Cassidy blowing it long before Final Tribal, and we as an audience were just completely overlooking this. After all, we were all focusing on Jesse being the biggest target on the board, and it wasn't even close. So I'm gonna flash back to a couple of conversations Cassidy had in the finale that should have told her, hey, you gotta make a couple of different moves. Any of the Coco votes, anything pre-merge, I don't know if you will be able to use as a gameplay, because it was all me and James. So if you go home tonight, that's what you're gonna go tell the jury. Of course, it was all. because I'll be on the jury. Yeah. And my vote is not gonna go to you. I think that you should make fire against me. Okay. Because if I'm the biggest threat in the game at this point, you could eliminate any doubts by beating me in fire. Number three. Let's go back to season 15, Survivor China. Our protagonist, James, is probably the physically strongest person we've ever seen on the show, and he is in a great position. That is until a tribe swap has the yellow tribe steal him and his tribe mate, Aaron, away. And what he doesn't know is that the yellow tribe has a nefarious plan in mind. PG is worried that winning immunities will hurt their tribe moving forward into the merge. So. You win these next two immunities. They're gonna get rid of two people on that team. You have no guarantees that those two people aren't gonna be Frosty and Sharia. If Frosty and Sharia are gone, it's gonna be me and Eric versus all seven Phelan members. Yeah. But on the other hand, if we throw these next two, so not only have we gotten rid of the two biggest threats for individual immunity, we will be going into a merge with five original Phelan, five I'm original Sharia. If my hunch is right and we're going to merge at 10, it could pay off in a major way. Be worth it? It could really be worth it. Yeah, it looks like they're going to throw the immunity challenges. They're not joking. And during said immunity challenge, James is working his heart out to win it. But Jamie literally throws a puzzle piece aside. And PG is playing dumb as if she isn't good at challenges like these, which she definitely is good at. They have to fit on, y'all. They have to fit on like this. Oh, PG, you good at puzzles? I'm good at Sudoku. Uh yeah pg threw it and back at camp her and jamie laugh about what they just did 
Oh boy. They know they have a three to two advantage over James and Aaron. So at Tribal Council, they, uh, well, they confess to something publicly that upsets James. So I'm judging by the lack of performance at today's challenge that you've decided you can't trust Aaron and James and you threw the challenge. Yes, sir. So PG, the big assumption you're making is what? Frost and Shreya get voted off and then suddenly we merge, guess what? Now there's only three original John Who members, seven Fei Long. Mm, I wonder who the next three to get picked off are going to be. Wow, I am surprised they said that out loud, but they truly think they have this perfect plan in place. And to be fair, they do vote out Aaron, three to two, James is an island. The next day they lose reward, this time on accident. And the Red Tribe gets to steal back James for a day where he says, Todd, I need your help. They are throwing challenges to get us out, and Todd makes a bold move. James came down, I gave him the idol. So if James takes that idol, loses immunity, they vote for him, but he uses the idol to get rid of Jamie. We sever the tie between her and Eric. Hopefully at 10 we'll merge and we'll still have our numbers to go strong into the merge. Well, I cannot stop smiling, and it's all good, because I'm not going anywhere. I have to be the idol. It's all good, baby. What? Yeah. You almost killed me just then, James. That's love, baby. Make you strong. Back at camp, James is like, <laughs> I'm going to throw the next immunity, play the sidle, and vote them off. But what he doesn't anticipate is that the L tribe has now changed their mind. They want him on their side, so they're not throwing the next challenge. I'm getting some serious whiplash from the decision making here. And the Red Tribe is so inept at eating gross food that. Yeah, the L tribe actually wins immunity almost due to how bad the red tribe is because James tries. Oh, he tries to throw it. The next day at camp, James says, hmm, if the red camp had an idol, I bet you the yellow camp does as well. I really like James personally, I do. Either he's a really good con man or he is exactly how he puts himself out to be. From what I've seen so far, my gut instinct is to trust James. Well, 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 James now has two idols unheard of in survivor up to this point by the way the merge happens and the plan is to eliminate the l tribe one after another which they do when jamie is gone first and frosty is gone later now with only eric and pg remaining james is like sweet once they're voted off i'm in the final five with two idols so I'm kind of guaranteed final three. So at Trouble Council, he goes to vote off PG and... If anyone has a hidden immunity idol, now would be the time to play it. I'll read the votes. First vote, Todd, PG, James, James, two votes James. James, 10th person voted out and the fourth member of our jury. James. James, Travis spoken. Time for you to go. I have the two idols. I guess I should have played them. I'm kind of disappointed in myself. I kind of caught a feeling, but I still didn't do it. Dealing with those people and trying to hold those Fruit Loops together this whole damn time, it was killing me. James is blindsided with two idols. This has never happened before, James, and no one has ever been blindsided with two idols ever since. James was far too trusting in his alliance, and he feels like a complete idiot. Heck, season 36 of Survivor makes an entire season based on dumb moves called Ghost Island, where James getting knocked out with both idols is part of the opening montage, and in episode 2, they bring back his idol. This is one of the authentic opinion idols. James, oh wow, this is a ghost. Only question is, can you reverse the curse? Reverse the curse. Number four. This is a moment people have asked me to cover ever since I did part one of this series. We move one season later from Survivor China to Survivor Micronesia. Our protagonist for this moment is actually Eric, the last remaining man on a season being strategically dominated by the women who have made a secret pact to eliminate all the men. Eric has won back-to-back -back immunities and has completely interrupted everything by forcing the women to vote off Alexis and their backs are against the wall. They're like, he can't win anymore. We need to get rid of him. So, uh, they start gaslighting him, guilt tripping him for playing the game in, by the way, a far less devious fashion than they are, but Eric is buying it. But nonetheless, they are mentally messing with him as one person has him say one thing and then another person has him say something else. And all the while, Eric is just essentially confused. So he talks to Suri in the shelter and maybe me, you and Par should go to the end and do that instead. That would mean we would get rid of who? Either Matt or Amanda. I literally walked right in front of Eric and heard his entire conversation with Suri about how 
Natalie and Amanda are the biggest jury vote threats. Everybody's going to vote for them in the jury so they can't go to the final three. You know what? I could have literally bitch slapped him. Smack him like his mother. Well, well, well. Everyone, and I do mean everyone is going to vote him out smartly no one ever tells eric that natalie overheard that entire conversation despite her telling all the women guess what i just heard so it is time for the final five immunity challenge and can eric save his butt because he needs to so badly eric crossed his first two ropes he's digging for those puzzle pieces eric has his first bag heading back to solve his first puzzle eric has solved his first puzzle Heading back out with another set of coordinates. Come on, baby. Eric has his second bag of puzzle pieces. Whitefish bird, seagull. Turtle, whitefish bird, seagull. Turtle, whitefish bird, seagull. Eric with a big lead now. Amanda, Sari, still digging. Eric lines up his ropes, digging for that third and final bag of puzzle pieces. Eric has his third and final bag of puzzle pieces. Eric thinks he has it. Guaranteed final four. Eric wins immunity once again. And with this around your neck, you are safe at tonight's travel council. Eric is guaranteed a spot in the final four. So Eric is safe for now and guaranteed final four immunity. Hmm. Now keep in mind, he's not privy to all these private conversations like we are. So when Sari proposes this plan I'm about to show you and Natalie talks to him, as far as he knows, Natalie is just a fellow fan on a season called Fans vs. Favorites who wants to reach the end and actually have a shot at winning like himself. I wonder if he would give Nat his necklace. Why would it benefit him giving me the necklace? Nat, tell him that if he were to give you the necklace, that would redeem him and we would vote for Amanda. Who would fall for that? Like, I feel stupid listening to you guys right now. I'm like, Ozzy, <laughs> Jason, and Eric. He belongs in that threesome. You give me your necklace. I'm not even going to consider that. Just hear me out. If you gave me your necklace tonight, Sari said you'd hands down vote for Amanda. That's all we need. What's wrong with voting for Amanda without me giving up the necklace? Everybody thinks I'm an idiot right now. I'm just right thinking now. jury votes for you because mm -hmm. you're riding this thing all the way to the end. And when I get there, I'm not going to have anybody. Right. I have felt like I don't have a lot of jury votes. Yeah. Wow. No respect on Eric's name. He does talk to Suri, who is a master at manipulation, where she says if he does give the necklace to Natalie, she'll know that he's telling the truth and she can trust him and she can vote with him. Right now, Eric is under the pretense that Amanda or Parvati in a final three would win. So he says he will think about it. If they agree to vote up Parvati, Suri and Natalie say, sure, we'll vote off Parvati. That's not an issue. But Eric, he's still hesitant to the idea. So at Tribal Council, Amanda and Parvati lay a heavy guilt trip on him for lying to people and Eric just shakes his head to the jury like yep I did that everything they're saying is the truth I mean come on Eric so it's time to vote and Eric you have the individual immunity necklace as always you can give it up to somebody if you choose to and I know that actions do speak louder than words I want to give individual immunity to Natalie I don't even know what to say, but thank you. My mother always told me, you may not be able to beat him with these all the time, but you can always beat him with this. Sorry. You know, you're crazy. You officially go down as the dumbest survivor ever in the history of Survivor ever. First vote, Eric. Parvati. Eric. Two votes, Eric. 13th person voted out and the sixth member of our jury. Eric. You guys drive me crazy. Eric, the trap is spoken. Yeah. From Eric's point of view, this move was extremely risky and had potential to help him, but the show makes a massive point to tell this move from the women's point of view, which paints him as the biggest idiot of all time. And the show will not let this go, as here is a montage of moments from here until today of the show bringing up this move and just dunking on him time after time. Ozzy and Jason certainly put themselves in the Survivor Hall of Fame for dumb moves, but they pale in comparison to Survivor fan Eric. Dumbest move ever? Perhaps. It's true. I want to give individual immunity to Natalie. You officially go down as the dumbest 
survivor ever. At first, I mean, when it happened, at first I was like, oh my God, you're dumb. You're real dumb. And I saw everybody here as a friend and instead of a competitor, instead of an enemy. All right, here are the dumbest moves. Take a look at this, flashback. I want to give individual immunity to Natalie. The 13th person voted out in the sixth member of our jury. Eric. Where is Eric? Eric, wow, with a new haircut. Eric was a fan on the first Fans vs. Favorites and his inexperienced show. I want to give individual immunity to Natalie. You officially go down as the dumbest in the history of Survivor ever. I want to give individual immunity to Natalie. I have the two idols. I guess I should have played them. One bad decision can haunt you forever. Oh my goodness. I pull out this big green package. This necklace could be the single most iconic relic in the history of survival. I want to give individual immunity to Natalie. And then promptly voted him out. Thirteenth person voted out in the sixth member of our jury, Eric. When I saw season 16, I thought Eric made the most boneheaded move. And now it's like, whoa, I have that man's idol around my neck. And it's because of guys like Eric and James that we have these early dumb moves. I want to give individual immunity to Natalie. Thirteenth person voted out in the sixth member of our jury, Eric. <laughs> I want to give individual immunity to Natalie. It was beyond belief. This was the greatest girl power moment of my life. Eric, the tribe has spoken. That may not even be every time it's mentioned. Those were just the moments I knew off the top of my head. Poor guy, this show will just not let us forget. Number five. Now let's jump forward seven seasons to Survivor South Pacific. We have an alliance of people who are, well, they're utilizing religion in a way to manipulate others, specifically Brandon Hansen and specifically Christianity, which by the way, Christianity is never meant to be used like this. I want to put that disclaimer here because the way they're using it just disgusts me. So Brandon Hans, he is the nephew of Russell Hans, who you might recall from the third video in the series. Russell was notoriously a villain, probably the biggest one in the show's history up to this point by far. And Brandon is trying to not only change the Hans name, but he's also, he's really young and he wants to become a good man, but he's trying to do the right thing. I think that's the important part because he's kind of the only one in the Alliance trying to do the right thing because he is in an Alliance with Coach and Albert who are both pretending to be Christians to purposely manipulate Brandon and create this semi cult, which by the way is completely out of character for Survivor and something I had to make a separate video for due to how far they take this. So they all have eliminated the other tribe and it is time to eliminate each other. Five of them remain and it is clear that Albert is the next to go because no one really likes Albert at all. Brandon wins the final five immunity and back at camp, Albert is being so, so fake. He said he's him. never, ever spoke against me in this game. Well, yesterday you brought up, you said, okay, we're still good for the three. You, said you to me, just told that is, me. That is not true. You just told you're me. You're lying out your ass. That is don't not you true. lie to me. That is not true. You, you just don't, told don't you me Rick, that you never did that. I did Look. not. Why is he? Why is his word higher than mine? I just don't want you to close your heart on me, man. I feel like your heart's close to me right now, man. My heart's not close to you, brother. Who am I not to forgive? I'm an oh, imperfect yes. person. I, I forgive him. You're, you're, you're making me look like a bad dude, and I'm not a bad dude. I'm not voting you. I just made up in my mind. And I strongly, strongly believe that Albert deserves to be here. Really? If I have to, I'll give you my immunity necklace. I don't know if I said this before, but let me kind of clarify. Brandon is 19, naive, and has been taken advantage of his whole life. Not just in Survivor, in life. He has anger issues, but when he calms down, he usually tries to do the right thing. You can tell his heart's in the right place. So he talks to Coach about this deal with Albert, and... If I have to, I'll give him my necklace. But I know you'll never vote against me. And I know you'd never do anything or vote any way that you knew that I was going home. I honestly believe that this is what God wants us to do. Well, no, it, no. Remember, no. This is what God wants you to do. Well, I'll tell you what. But what I need to do right now uh -huh. is I need to pray. And I promise you this. I will do whatever God tells me to do. Oh, boy. Now, with this video, I should probably point out that giving away immunity is by no means a death sentence. Jenna gave Heidi her necklace in season six and Jenna won that season. And heck, we just saw Todd give James an idol and guess who won that season? That's right, Todd. However, neither of these individuals were being emotionally manipulated like Brandon is here because at tribal council, immediately Brandon gives Albert his necklace, no questions asked. And as the tribal devolves, Brandon realizes, 
I made a huge mistake. And the funny part about it is, I consider these two guys my best friends. We have a very solid connection with each other. So, is there a part of you as a Christian man who now wants to take the necklace off and do the same thing that Brandon just did for you? If I realistically believe that he's in trouble, yes. Yeah, so I just feel curious to see if Albert would get him back the necklace if he thought Brandon was in trouble. Honestly, I don't think he's going home tonight, so I'm not going to give him the necklace back. So, Brandon, I'm guessing you are sensing that you're not as secure as you thought. Yes, sir. I honestly believe that tonight might be my night. Not often do I think people are massive jerks for their in-game moves. In fact, I think what the women did to Eric, while it was mean, it was all in the game. Here, they're taking it a step too far, messing with this poor boy's psyche. So when everyone goes to vote. First vote, Brandon, Sophie, Brandon, we're tied. 15th person voted out of Survivor South Pacific. Brandon. Brandon, tribe has spoken. Albert voted with Brandon, knowing full and well he was going anyways, but Coach was the deciding factor. Mind you, Coach loses this season to Sophie, the person he just had an opportunity to vote out, so maybe hmm, he should have made a different decision. Brandon does get a second shot at the game of Survivor in season 26, along with Eric, by the way, but that is for a whole other jaw-dropping video. Trust me. So what jaw-dropping moments in Survivor history should make it into the next volume? Comment below and let me know. Thank you for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.